Welcome back to Yes to Tesla, and today we're going to be talking about the newest update that just came out. It is V12 2025.32 dot and a bunch of other numbers. So this one right here is supposed is supposed to bring what's called low power mode. So when my battery on my phone starts to die, I can put it into low power mode, and certain features of the phone won't work. Same thing with the features on your car. But it's kind of questionable on the things that they say will stop working because these are the things that you already have to turn off anyways just to have your battery last the longest it can. I feel like this is kind of a fail and it's kind of useless and it doesn't even change the color of the battery. Usually if I change my, uh, my phone on to low power mode, it'll turn yellow. It doesn't even turn a different color. The only time it goes yellow is when it's absolutely at a low battery state. Isn't that crazy? So let's go ahead and go over some of the things that they put in here for what will be disabled if you decide to put it on low power mode. It says, when low power mode is enabled, your vehicle will conserve energy by automatically disabling the following items. Sentry mode, but if you're at home, you're gonna disable sentry mode anyways. If you're below 20%, sentry mode is deactivated anyways. Summon standby, which is also disabled when you are below 20%, so it's essentially already a low powering mode, but that's not a big deal, okay? It's not, it's not like it's really eating up power. Something that will eat up power is keeping accessory power on. The only time I keep it on is when I'm actually going to use it, otherwise it remains off, but you can just toggle that off yourself. Um, keep climate on and camp mode, which, okay. So dog mode apparently still works, but keep and camp mode don't work with this mode activated. Okay, all right. I mean, technically it's not ever activated until you activate it yourself. So I don't understand, I don't understand that, but okay. Scheduled preconditioning. This is something I started to do when I first, first, first got the car. But to me, it's completely useless. The only time I precondition is when I'm heading to a supercharger. Then I put it on the supercharger thing and I go. Okay. And the last thing is cabin overheat protection. I live in the Arizona uh, state of Arizona, so that cabin heat protection would literally leave my car running all day. So I turn that off regardless. These are all things that are disabled for your low powering mode. In my opinion, you could have did better. This this is this is not not a good update. It's not a big deal. These are most of these are already deactivated whether you're at home, I'm talking about sentry mode, or you're driving all over town and then you activate your low battery mode and here we are things that are already basically turned off until you turn them on. Like when I got this car, I didn't have to turn off accessory mode. Accessory mode was already off. I didn't have to worry about nothing. Keep in camp mode, unless you don't know, you don't own a Tesla, then you already know. But if you don't own a Tesla, then you don't know that it all, it's, it's not ever on unless you activate it, unless you turn it on. So it's saying that low power mode makes those two things not work. They're not working until you make them work regardless. So if you decided that you needed to keep climate on, you press keep climate on and it would say, hey, you're in low battery mode, turn off low battery, here we go, boom, and then I'm activated. So I don't understand that as well. But it also says, while in low power mode, oh no, hold on, while charging with low power mode enabled, sentry mode and accessory power will remain available. Keep climate on, camp mode are only available when supercharging. So if you're just regular charging, it's not gonna, it's not like at your house, it's not gonna be doing it at all. But if you're supercharging out and about, then okay, which makes sense because what's the point of charging when you're just literally just flushing it down the, down the toilet? That's what they're trying to get out, I guess. Um, while in low power mode, your vehicle continues to use energy for standby functions, screen activity, and Tesla app interactions in cold weather. Available energy may drop more quickly. Okay, so those are separate sentences. Sorry, I read it as one. So it says, while in low power mode, your vehicle continues to use energy for standby functions, screen activity, and Tesla app interactions, period. Then, in cold weather, 
available energy may drop more quickly or in extremely hot like I am here in Arizona. Um, then it says, you can click this little blue thing, it says see how your vehicle uses energy while parked in the energy app. So I, since I'm parked, I can see how my energy is used and consumed already by just going to the energy app. So I went to the energy app, screenshotted it, and here we are. So screen time has cost me 2.1 miles. So that's that's what screen time even does. Just anything you have to do on the screen. Preconditioning, which is 0.8 miles. Anytime you say, hey, I wanna cool down my car before I get in, boom, hit the precondition, or I'm about to go supercharge, boom, hits precondition, there you go. Camp, oh, oh ca cabin overheat protection, never have it on, because like I said, it'll be on all day. Sensory mode's already deactivated when I'm at home. Uh, 1.3 miles I've lost by looking through the mobile app and doing any interactions on the mobile app. Some standby is already disabled, so that, that is zero miles. Then vehicle standby is, is the most, which is 2.9 miles. We'll say this though, but it, I mean, my car is asleep all the time anyways until I go and wake it up. Like right now it's been asleep for six hours. That's literally when the last time I was home, is six hours ago. And I still have 161 miles and I had 162 miles when I left. So it went down one mile, cool. And sentry mode is not enabled, nothing, nothing's enabled. So it's not like that's helping or hurting at all. It's nothing's enabled at all. And had I not put on low powering mode, all those things that it mentioned have already been disabled. Okay, like I, I love the fact that they're thinking they're using their brain, but what I don't understand is why the low powering mode wouldn't put it into a, like I would have expected it to automatically shift you to chill, automatically, like why didn't you mention chill mode? Think about that. Must be because chill mode really ain't saving you enough energy to even mention. Has to be, because why wouldn't it automatically, because that's what I expected, is be in chill mode, um, and the regenerative braking maybe would be like more like harsh so that way it could like get more energy back into the battery while in low powering mode kind of like it's charging essentially um, a couple of the features like if you're sitting here and, and you wanted to sit here in this nice AC maybe it only goes to a certain amount like maybe like instead of going all the way up to 10 it only goes to like 6 you know Something like that. I don't know. I just, I'm just saying there's different ways that they could have did this. I'm not a professional. I have no idea how you can improvise and make this better. But I will tell you this. You could have did it better. You should have did it better. And I'm low-key disappointed by this. So, Tesla, man. Come on now, baby. This is constructive criticism towards your way. Because I love you and I love this car and I love everything about Tesla. But doesn't mean I ain't got no complaints about something doesn't mean that I'm not going to say nothing about something, okay? You put out an update. It took me 55 minutes on an update just to get low powering mode. Come on now. I appreciate you guys. If you guys want to buy your own brand new or used Tesla, please use the link down below. It really helps out the channel, but also helps you out as well. I appreciate you and have a good day.